Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So uh, in one of my last videos, I shared with you guys the purchase of this uh, Bugler pinstriping tool uh, that I purchased for doing some pinstriping or some striping, I guess, uh, on a vintage safe that I'm working on restoring. And uh, I knew good and well that I wasn't going to be able to do it with a paintbrush, a traditional pinstriping paintbrush. I just don't have that skill. And several of you guys recommended this tool as uh, something that I might be able to use for this. So I made a purchase of the Bugler tool. And uh, in today's video, we're going to give it a shot, uh, try it out. Uh, so a couple of things to start out with to telling you guys. First off, um, I've never used this tool before. This is right out of the box, just like I got it. Uh, you know, yeah, I picked it up and kind of played with it, but not with any paint. So I am a complete novice at this at this point. I have uh, read the manual. I have looked at uh, the video that uh, these guys put together for using it. And uh, it looks pretty easy. Uh, so we're going to try it out and see how easy it really is for someone with absolutely no experience doing any kind of striping work whatsoever. Uh, I'm not even very good when it comes to painting, period. So uh, this this is gonna be a challenge uh, for me. If, if I'm successful with using this tool, I think anybody uh, could be successful with it. So we're gonna give it a try. And uh, so we're gonna get the tool out and uh, kind of go through the process of, uh, of uh, trying this out. I'll zoom you guys in so you can see what's going on and uh, we'll go through, the, through it. So the kit that I got actually came with uh, about seven different rollers and um, you know these vary in width from the narrowest one was about 25 thousandths to the uh, largest one here being about a hundred and looks like about 112 thousandths wide. So uh, you know we've got a good selection of different widths. Uh, the tip that was on it uh, when I got it, let's just see, we'll measure this one. This, uh, let's just, we'll call it 75,000. It's like more about 72,000, but uh, that's the, the width. So, um, you know, a little background on this tool, you know, it's, it's, it's got a cylinder here. It has a little plunger in the bottom that you can fill the cylinder up with paint. And as you use it, you can reload it up. The uh, top with the wheel just comes right off and uh, you load the paint right into the top. So I'm not going to fill this thing up because I'm just going to practice. I got a piece of a... Uh, paper here that we're just going to do some practicing on. I can just rip these off and uh, try some different things. So uh, for right now, I've just got some black Rust-Oleum paint. This is probably not uh, the ideal paint to use with this. Uh, I know they, they really like the, the one-shot sign painters uh, paint, which is actually what I'm going to use when I do my pen striping, but that's a, a gold paint and it's pretty expensive. So uh, for practicing, I'm just going to try some of this uh, black paint that I had laying around the shop and hopefully it will be thick enough. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up. Um, I've already sh shaken it up very well, so it should be good and mixed up. And uh, got most of a can here. And uh, to transfer this, I'm just going to use a straw kind of as a pipette here. Uh, we'll just put my finger over the end and... I've already made a mess. That's all right. We'll take that top piece of paper off. One more straw full should be enough. Or maybe too much. All right. So, got a rag handy here. We'll just wipe that up, wipe it here a little bit better. So there's a little notch on the front and the wheel goes toward that notch. And now I'm gonna actually wipe this up a little bit better, get it good and clean. And what I should do now is just push that little plunger up from the bottom until I see just a little bit of paint coming out of the top. Ah, there it is. So I'll tell you what, let me tear this sheet off and we'll just put it over here to the side. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna prime it on this piece. So they recommend just kind of taking it and getting that line. Uh, hey, that looks pretty good. 
So uh, you use this tool by pulling it towards you. And uh, they recommend to kind of hold it kind of like kind of like I've got in my hands here. It's probably going to take a little bit of practice for me. Um, you can kind of use your hands here to guide with and it's not pretty bad for a freehand stripe. That's pretty darn easy, and uh, for the first time out of the shoot here, I'm making some pretty, pretty nice lines, and that's kind of how I'll be using it on the safe, is uh, just outlining. I'm just going to be making a series of outlines. Uh, there's really not going to be any curves. Uh, I can use go off the edge of most of the pieces here to keep a straight line, so it's fairly simple pin striping. Uh, now, you know, I notice here, you know, I got over my lines, I was just practicing, but uh, when I do this for real, I think what I'll do is I'll probably mask the ends there uh, so that it will be real easy to uh, get a good clean break where I want to stop at, and we'll just pull those up. So, but this, uh, this uh, is pretty easy. So probably the biggest thing that I see you got to do is this wheel is flat, and obviously the wider the wheel, the more important it is to keep that wheel flat. And I noticed in the videos, if you start tilting this over one way or the other, it actually flares that line, which is nice if you're coming to it, you want to do that. But obviously, if you're doing a long, uh, straight line, it's, it's very important that you uh, keep this tool flat while you're doing it. So very interesting. So, you know, now let's see, we can just do some curves here. You can tell I'm not a, any good at pinstriping. But I could see how this would be a fairly easy tool to uh, kind of get used to using. I can draw a fairly straight line just by hand. Uh, it comes with some guides that you can put in here uh, to like roll up along a side of a piece of paper. So let's let's try one of these and just see how that works. We'll uh, pull this sheet off and so we're just gonna run that up next to the edge of this piece of paper. And um, let's go down a little bit more. Too far. Yeah, I got off the paper on that one. So that's handy. Another accessory that they sell, and I'm probably going to get it for doing this, is uh, they actually sell a little magnetic strip that you can use to run this guide on. So if you're farther from the edge than what this goes, you can just lay that mag magnet on there and uh, literally use that as a, a guide to uh, roll against. Tell you what, let's uh, slide that in a little bit and we'll do another one. Oops. My paper's squishing up. That wasn't the tool, that was the paper. Well, I can tell with this guide, I'm gonna have to do a little practice. I'm having trouble uh, keeping it right on the edge. Just wanting to run off on the, on the table, but still I can see where that might be useful. So, all in all, first impression with this, 
So I'm pretty darn impressed. Uh, it's pretty dang easy just to I <laughs> did that last time. I'm not very good at art, guys. So my pinstriping um, patterns are not uh, very good. And as you can see, that, that turn, you can make that turn, but I've got to get a little bit better with hitting my target there. Not very good there. <laughs> I think I'll probably stick to going straight lines. But uh, very good. I'm impressed with this. Uh, I'm going to probably do some more practicing off camera and uh, before I actually do the pinstriping. I'm, I'm not quite ready uh, to do the actual pinstriping yet. Right now I'm just kind of practicing a little bit. So. Um, probably be another video when I actually do the pinstriping on the safe uh, and it will be in gold uh, on black. So it look, should look very nice and we're going to basically uh, try to copy the same pinstriping patterns that was on the uh, safe originally. I'm going to keep playing with this. Uh, I'll probably turn the camera off and uh, practice a little bit but uh, first impressions with the Bugler pinstriping tool uh, looks pretty darn easy. I think I can do this. So I've been playing around with this for a while now and getting better. I still need to work on my technique a little bit, but uh, you know, again, I think I'm going to be able to do this, but now I want to go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. So um, first thing we'll do is we're going to pull this. Uh, I think first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some mineral spirits into this uh, container here that we're going to clean out of. And I'm going to pull this cap off and we're just going to drop that down in there and the paint, uh, we're just going to put right back in here. We'll just empty this out. Now I'll pull this apart, pull my plunger out and give this thing a good soaking clean it up. I got a little acid brush uh, that came with a kit, which I have plenty more of these that I just use around the shop for all kinds of stuff. All right, we'll let all that dry real good and uh, put everything up. So uh, that's about all there is to cleaning this up. Uh, not too bad at all. So there you go, guys. A quick uh, demo and first try out of the Bugler pinstriping tool. I like it. Um, I think it's gonna work well. Again, I wanna do some more practicing with this before I actually get over to, to start my actual pinstriping job. But uh, first impressions right out of the shoot, this is a great tool. And uh, easy to use, uh, and with again with a little bit of practice, uh, I think I'll be a pro at this. So uh, there you go. Uh, we'll uh, hopefully be able to bring you back in here and show you the actual pinstriping uh, when I get to that part. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.